Hi, it's been so long since I've uploaded anything to YouTube so I thought I'd get back into it today and show you how to do these honeycomb darns. Honeycomb darns are a really great method of darning for areas of fabric that's just worn thin rather than has a hole in and it also looks great both sides so you could choose which side you wanted to have on the outside of your clothing. So depending on what piece of clothing you're mending, you are probably going to need some sort of darning mushroom or disc. I'm using one of my own darning discs here and I don't need the handle for this. So I'm just going to place the disc inside of the sock as you can see and the areas that have worn thin are right on the toe area. So I'm just getting that into place and then I'm going to attach the elastic around the darning disc just to keep all the fabric nice and taut whilst I'm working. As you can see there's quite a few patches of worn through fabric here so I'll be doing several small honeycomb darns all around the different areas that need it. To get started I've threaded up my needle and then I've just pushed it through from the edge of the darning disc there and then pulled the thread out again around where the area of damage is. To create your first stitch you're going to push your needle back down about five millimeters to the side and up from your first thread. It sounds confusing but as you can see I've got three points there. I've got where my needle came up, I've got where my needle is going in and then where my needle is coming out again. Then what I'm going to do when I pull my needle through and the thread, as you can see I've got my thread underneath the needle there. So I'll show you that again. We're going to push our needle down alongside the first stitch as you can see there back up again alongside the bottom stitch and then make sure that your thread is underneath your needle so that when you pull your thread through you catch that stitch on your thread. I'm going to show you that again. I'm now moving my needle across and trying to keep it in line with my first stitches and then pulling it back up again and then catching the thread. This is the same as doing a blanket stitch on the edge of a blanket or a quilt or any kind of hem, but in this instance we're just moving around the area of damage rather than working on the edge of a piece of fabric. As you work around to create your next stitches, just make sure that you're moving outside of the damaged area. As you can see this is ending up as a sort of organic circle shape for me. Um, but I'm just making sure that the gap between the stitches is relatively even and that I'm not getting too close to the weakened fabric in the centre just yet. You'll then continue to do that all the way around the area that you're patching up and I'm just going to speed things up a bit here. And then when you get back around to where you started, you should have something that looks like this. And then to finish that first circle, I'm just making one more stitch but lining up my new stitch with the first piece of thread that was my starting stitch. Now we're ready to start our second row of stitches. So I'm going to bring my needle further down this time so that it comes out further down into the circle that we've created. Don't worry about this loop of thread here, that will become secured into place when we come back around again and it will get secured in as we start our third row of stitches. This next round of stitches is worked in exactly the same way. It's just that now we have our first round as a foundation and as a guide for us to mark our stitches out. As you can see, I'm using the horizontal stitches from the first round and pushing my needle down through each of those When you get back round to the beginning of your second round of stitches, we're going to finish that final stitch and also catch in that loop of thread from the beginning of this round that I mentioned earlier and said, don't worry, we'll catch that in. That's where this happens. As you can see, I've just pulled that through at the same time as the final stitch on that round and it's pulled them all together. And now we're ready to go in and start the third round. So exactly the same thing here. Obviously this time you have much less room to work with because we've nearly reached the center of the hole. So just carry on as best you can and follow the same method as before using your previous round of stitches to guide you. 
and as you can see this is really closing up for me now so this will be the last few stitches that I'll be able to do and that will be the end of the darn. Again as with the second round I had that loop of thread here that needs to be caught in this final stitch like this so I'm just going to pull my needle through there and that's my last stitch finished that secured everything into place so now I can just push my needle through and come out at the edge of the mushroom just as I did at the start. So that's the darn finished from the outside. As I said at the beginning you could choose to have this as the inside of your darn. Um, the inside's a really nice finish I think it looks kind of like fireworks um, and it's nice and flat so again it's they're both really comfortable options but to finish off all we need to do is pull those tail threads through like this and then we just need to thread the tail threads up with our needle and then I'm just going to thread the tail threads in and out of a few of these stitches just to secure everything into place before trimming the edges off so I'm just going through two or three stitches like that and then trimming off the excess there and that's it that's the honeycomb darn all finished as you can see it looks really good on the inside and it's also quite cute on the outside so I've got a few more areas here that need patching up but it's a really quick and easy way to darn especially if you haven't got a hole that you're trying to repair in a really strong way this is a really great way to just reinforce those areas before the damage gets worse I hope you enjoyed this video I feel a little rusty it feels like it's been a really long time since I've sat and done a tutorial so I hope you enjoyed it and I'd love to know if you give it a go and I'd love to see any photos you have of the honeycomb dance that you work on.